This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coffee Newsbreak, your place for condensed global coffee industry news, events, and resources posted daily. Find Coffee Newsbreak on Instagram at Coffee Newsbreak or check the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and I am truly sad that this is the last episode of a five-part series with Nolan because this has been a really healing conversation kind of part two of a healing conversation for us and um but it's also been an opportunity for people out in the coffee world who do listen to this podcast uh perhaps get insight into something that played out in the world of coffee that they didn't understand what was happening behind the scenes and they get to see the very human experience of who you are, Nolan, and mm-hmm. and the person that had to navigate um, a, a somewhat public challenge over, like, let's say a decade because it wasn't just one article or two mm-hmm. articles or anything like that. Like, there's a whole lot that's gone on. Mm-hmm. In this episode of the podcast, I want to talk about how that has informed, so how your past has informed what will come. Mm. And kind of the way that I'd like to look at that is from a sliding doors perspective. Do you think that the journey ahead would have been the same if you hadn't encountered this kind of warrior's journey that you've been on? Um. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful. Um, I'm really thankful that I hit the wall, you know. Yeah. Um, um, I'm really thankful that I, you know, it forced me to stop. And you know, you know, I said earlier that I always felt like from a young age that I just need to keep myself busy and I'll be okay. And I think that might have maybe, I, maybe I picked that up um, from the first time that I had or second time that I had depression, you know, mm. and then I I felt like I just need to keep something happening and I'll be okay. And that's ridiculous. I should be able to just sit and be okay. Um, and that is kind of the gift of what has happened, you know, like having to stop. It's so uncomfortable to stop and... Um, sit with your shit. Yeah, yeah, and maybe like, identity you know who am i what is it all what's it all for why why was i you know what was i doing this all for um so purpose that, was a, was challenged yeah yeah 100 percent. and um like i said before like the idea of life being a, a song or a dance or a musical and in fact i just need to kind of like sing and play and, and dance and um that's super cool to realize that now and to have time in my life now where I'm like, I can now start to change my life to be, to be like something that I really enjoy and, um, and that my kids get to enjoy me and that my wife enjoys me and I, and I show her how much I love her and I show my kids how much I love them and to genuinely be there in those moments, you know, not to miss out on those events that I would miss out on. Um, It's super cool. And so I kind of, I am also learning that like, you know, um, about the people that you surround yourself with. Mm. Um, I've got some beautiful friends around me here in Austin. And I've been so, so fortunate and lucky to just land next door to some amazing people. And we got to, you know, share houses, you know, where the, the kids are over at our house every night and vice versa and the community piece where it was like, actually, this is how we should live. And mm. I think um, I really I really want to, um, uh, I really hope, hope that that's like that for everyone, you know, where we can kind of like, whoa, hang on. What is it that we're chasing after? It's cool to have dreams. It is. It's great to have dreams. It's great to chase a big, hefty goal. But why? Why are we doing that? And um, providing you can like 
be okay with who you are and um, not need to go do something to prove something. Because that definitely was a big part of my journey. I felt like I was proving something, um, proving my worth, proving that I was good enough. Valid. You know? All yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you don't need to do that anymore and you're actually okay with who you are, um, the freedom that just kind of lead you, so you cool. get this new freedom and the weight lifts off you and you're like, I'm going to be fine. Yeah. And so what do we do with that now? You know, and that's so to me, that is like the next part of the journey now yeah, is around um, taking care of that. And so yeah. I, I, right now I did a lot of travel this year, which was great to get back out and see the producers and connect with all these old friends and like family but I kind of pushed it a bit too far again. The, the, the build out was intense for Austin to work really hard, really stressful, miss the kids, miss the wife, got on the plane, went to, we got, got the cafe open for two weeks. And you know how intense it is when you open a new business <laughs> and nothing's going how it should. And there's a long list of things that need fixing. <laughs> and then I got on a plane and went to Melbourne for the expo and I got off the plane Went to Amy's house, our CFO, had a shower, got a fresh pair of undies, went straight to the freaking expo. And, <laughs> and it was so intense. And it was it like, really oh, was. I could feel, I felt out of body. Um, and, but it also like, and anyway, and, and then like, got to see my family for the first time in three years. Got to see all the stuff. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And I came back so exhausted. But also, <clears throat> I was supposed to be back for two weeks and then go on another trip to Brazil. I was supposed to be in Brazil right now. A couple of excellences on. It's my favourite event of the whole year. I, I love it so much. But my wife really nicely and courageously asked me when I was in Australia, she's like, hey, Nolan, we, ne we need you to stay home. Can you oh, not God, go on that, that trip? How wonderfully strong of her. Yeah, and courageous and, of her and, 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 it's hard, and loving. It's hard for, actually for her because she never got the opportunity to ask for much. And so it takes a lot of courage. And I really was also feeling, man, I need to I need to stop and get back into rhythm. So right now I'm trying to um, get the kids off to the school, see them off, and then me and my wife will take um, a moment and we'll go to the park close by and we'll go do 30, 40 minutes of um, Qigong and like breathing and stretches mm -hmm. together. And then we'll do this Tai Chi form that we've been learning together. Mm -hmm. And so for about an hour every morning, we have this quiet moment down at the park where we kind of don't, I don't really care if anyone sees us doing some weird stretches or some shaking or something. <laughs> it looks kind of odd because it fucking feels great. <laughs> and it's about me feeling good, not about what someone's thinking no. about me and what I should be um and so that's fucking awesome and um and then i after that we come back home and have some fruit and yogurt and have a cup of coffee and i'm already i've already won yeah i'm already there i'm already like oh, I'm, I'm in a really beautiful state and then to go into work and to be able to now i can hey how are you doing how's it going rather than reacting to everything yeah, barking at things not being okay. Yeah. I can kind of like, um, I can have, I've got more grace and understanding about uh, being gentle about getting there. I, I've definitely learned to be more gentle on myself because I, I would shame myself if something wasn't working properly. The, the water isn't right. The coffee's not, the roast is wrong. Something's, there's always something wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll get it there. But I'm going to allow myself a bit of time to get there gracefully. I'm not going to go work till midnight fixing it so that it's perfect tomorrow. I'm going to take a bit more time. And that means being comfortable sitting in this uncomfortable space where I'm like, Ugh, that's not quite right. I don't like how that looks. That needs fixing. Okay, I'm aware of it. No one else seems to notice except for me. So everyone's actually okay. Yeah. But I'd like to fix it and I'll get to it. Um, that's been part of the journey too, you know, like just kind of. Um, uh, Can I have an, un a, an yeah. uncomfortable discussion with you about something on that? Please. There's 
Mice was one of those times where uh, people had gone away and then come back three years later and I feel like we needed that distance, everyone apart. I don't know how you feel about it. But a a lot of the things that people were talking to me about was, there's no other way to say it than to say it this way, male toxicity. And it sounds Uh like what you're talking about is that you've taken or you've given yourself the grace through your journey to recognise some of the more toxic behaviour that existed internally for you uh, and having experienced it from outside of you as well. Yeah. And you've kind of examined the role that you were playing in that yeah. And and found a way to give yourself some newfound grace. Yeah, yeah. Without feeling shame for it or allowing other people to shame you for it. Can we talk a little bit about that? hundred percent. No, I I, 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 there's a lot that I have to say about that. Like I, Please. I, I, I hit the wall really hard during COVID. Um, I almost lost everything. So it was, it was a, was a mess for me. Um, and I had to just stop. And I, um, I tried really hard to just um, get myself back on track. And so I started doing meditation and different things, um, exercise, even though I still felt like shit every day. Mm. Um, I just did it and I made sure that, hey, I've got, I, I realized I had to shake the system. Um, right. And fortunately, I've been through depression a couple of times. So I was like, hey, I, I know how this works. It's going to take some time. Mm. But... I have to do all the things that are going to actually be good for me. And I need to try and stop doing the things that are not serving me. And that's hard because some of those things that are not serving you are what's making you feel comfortable in the moment, yeah. but aren't serving you long term. And so I tried to shake everything. Um, in that, I, I started seeing a therapist weekly. Now I, would, I see him uh, fortnightly. Man, and, and you know what? Let's take the. Let's take the friggin' like let's normalize that. Yeah, I've let's a lot take of shame a stigma therapy, out of that. Right? Yeah, oh, for sure. I wish I had that from a kid. I wish yeah. I, I had spoke had someone to speak to. I've I've found someone for my boy to speak to every two weeks. Not because awesome. he not because awesome. he like has any problems, but because I want him to be able to have a place where he can fucking a. And when stuff gets challenging and hard, to have a safe space. To be able to like speak to it rather than bottle it, because um, we don't we don't encourage that in men in society. Because right, something's wrong with you, right? If you right. if you're doing that in 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 in, in the in the um community and and for the men, I mean, speaking about men and society, I mean, so I joined a men's group after right. I did enough personal therapy. Yeah, awesome. My, my therapist was like, "Hey, no, I think you're ready to start a, a, a men's group," and I'm like, "Man, sign me up!" and he just happened to have this friend that was the most amazing leader, doing a lot of work with psilocybin therapy, but it was a mythic masculinity men's group. And we met every week for three three weeks and then one week off. And I came out of the gates. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm just going to be so open and raw yeah, about what's amazing. happening for me. I'm going to put leave it all on the table. And... People don't like it, so whatever, I don't care. And and I just went for it. And that just set the precedent and everyone just started going for it with all these like real hardships that we were feeling. And it became yeah. a big dumping place at first. And man, it really, it really shook me how on this screen, because it was all on Zoom, nine different men, every single one was from a different walk of life, right? Mm. And like one one young guy in his twenties, single. I'm um, married with kids and in my 40s and, you know, I've got my struggle, this young guy on his own, deep in a struggle. Mm. No matter where the spectrum was, everyone was fucking struggling. We've all got struggles. And to be able to kind of, as men, go, you know what, this is is really hard and it sucks and I've got all these feelings and I've done some bad shit and I've said some things and I'm – beating myself up for it, whatever it is, to be able to kind of go, hey, thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. That was really vulnerable. 
and it's really it's really inspiring because um it makes me feel like i'm not alone and, I and you're hurt yeah yeah it's, it's so cool and, and you deserve and, uh, to so, be yeah everyone does right I mean, there's some toxic shit out there, Lee. I mean, um, oh man, tell me about it. <laughs> I, we could take this sideways, but like a porn, porn or something that kind of yeah, like yeah. is big time, <clears throat> really, really toxic, and um, and a really powerful drug for yep. a lot of people, um, and a big industry, um, and really not helping the children, not helping no. the boys, not helping why you know, and for men, um masturbation it's a oh, it's yeah. a kind of uh, all of my men thing. male friends talk about it how it's like taken over their lives the accessibility oh, I, mean, I, want, I want to put a name out there for any men that are listening and want some inspiration there's a guy that i'm following his name is tyson adams mm-hmm. look him up check him out because he's like yeah really i will doing some really inspiring stuff for men um teaching them to to get off addiction like that and that's human awesome. retention but also like actually just loving yourself not not getting excited because of someone you can actually just celebrate yourself you you having them yeah love yourself yeah and the, and let's so the normalize way we treat that. ourselves is how we treat others yeah and so instead of hiding in a corner and shaming yourself over some kind of you know cheeky naughty moment yeah turn it into more of a celebration yep 100 percent and and yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Can can I just say on that we recently had um, the IWCA International Women's Coffee Alliance for Australia meeting, and there was one man in there. Shout out to you, Ben Bicknell, and uh, yeah. Ben. Yeah. And we were talking about why you know this balance between men and women, and how it's a lot of heavy lifting for men emotionally. Yeah. To come to terms with the feminine in them and to come to terms with the way that they connect with feminine energy. Women need men to love themselves more. In this industry, we need men to go on this journey that you're talking about because the alternative to that is that they come to work and they react to women in a really aggressive, challenging way. You know what? Like, I I mean... Yeah, so full on like men together and yeah. having to like suddenly like I've got a especially when a you know, a, a room of men, right? And then yeah. a girl appears. Yeah. And suddenly we're all like it, it's a dick it measuring competition at that point. Right? To be with men and to be able to talk vulnerably vulnerably about um what was happening and feelings and emotions yeah. was so powerful. Um yeah. and I so what I would say is I, I think more than ever, men need men around yes. them, and we need we need this support. In the for men need this network of men around them to support them, and for women, man, you need more women around you, like strong totally. women, and come together. And it is about individualizing, and so it's kind yep. of like me learning who I am, and as an individual, that, that makes me really attractive to my partner. When we were hundred percent. When we just rely on each other to be everything for each other, like my wife is my best friend, my lover, yep. my you know workmate. Uh, that's hard cleaner, lifting. Cool. That's that's. Uh, uh, that's no undertone. longer sexy, right? It's yeah. like yeah, it's like no, we 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 can have other people in our community yep. that you can have some of those weird, weird or hard or awkward conversations with, so that you can have those special intimate moments with your special yep. person, and it's not just everything from one person. Um, you know, and, mm. and as you were mentioning, like strong, like we need, women need women and, and and men need men, but we also all need each other. Like there's this, this kind of demonizing of women who are strong because either we, we don't celebrate strong women sure. very much. Yeah. We, you know, they're bitches mm. or they're, they're one version of that uh, kind of uh-huh. thing, but Men finding men and being able to not get into that dick measuring kind of alpha yeah. thing means uh-huh. that they don't feel so threatened by strong women because a strong woman's not trying to be strong because she needs to destroy other men. Yeah. She's just find, trying to find the space in her world where she gets to yeah. not have to battle the forces. 
in the yes, hundred percent. And in the same way that you're saying, men getting comfortable with their feminine side, yeah, that is women getting comfortable with their masculine, masculine. side, right? Totally. And, and, and they're both welcome, and it's Absolutely. okay. And, yeah, it's it's totally okay, and it, it it um, yeah, no, it's a really cool thing. I mean, um, I I think it's confusing out there because we all smoke and mirrors and it's all a bunch of like yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of pretend you know like we um put on a brave face to be to light up the room right and we're miserable inside right and that's so sad if you're miserable inside speak about it talk about it share it the the load won't be so bad you know it, it, it's time to turn around and face you know um those things that we kind of like um don't want to face. Um, and if, if if you're someone out there listening to this that often hears themselves say things like, oh, you know, that's a – she's just being emotional or she's just being um, sensitive. Like look at why you feel threatened by that. I think it's – what I've experienced is that the men who – are constantly saying that kind of stuff to me are the men who are most scared of connecting with their feminine. They feel threatened by well, the sensitivity. A, it, is a, it is a lot. I mean, I, I'll try and explain something like for, for me personally, you know, yeah. my, my, my wife. My wife grew up in a very different background to I did and very um, expressive with emotions in that family, you know, to the point that it was a pretty tough side of that spectrum, you know. Yeah. Um, wasn't an easy childhood for her. Mm. I had this beautiful childhood that was so loving and tender, mm. but some topics weren't really touched. And emotions right. that were like anger, you, I never really saw my parents fight. Um, yeah, my wow. dad would take his anger out to the shed because he was trying to protect us from it, which is a beautiful thing. But as Except... a result, <laughs> I, I'm not very good at um, dealing with it. And so when, when her frustrations and maybe... Um, as you said, like sensitivity sh- yep. might show up, then I'm I'm super sensitive to it, and I'm yep. like, whoa, 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 that that something's wrong with you if you're behaving like that. Well, no, no, right. no. Actually, Go to the shed. It's so yeah. Take, it's okay take if to you the have shed. big emotions, and I'm trying to learn really hard right now to to not get caught up in someone else's and yep. try and fix it for them, and just try and reassure myself, hey, you're okay. Let them have their moment. Yeah. Don't you don't need to fix or change or make them okay, um, and it and it and it passes and it's 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 a lot. But we there's a lot that we have to navigate and there's a lot that we have to unpick from what was kind of like um, conditioned or passed down or like handed to us. Um, yeah, I got to tell you, sir. I think that beyond being a leader in coffee. And with the practices that you're doing with sourcing coffee and building cafes and bringing experiences to consumers of specialty coffee. I rarely meet men like you in this industry that are leaders for men in this industry. Mm. The kind of leader that I want to see for men in this industry. Mm. I've got to tell you, Nolan, I never thought that I would speak those words. Mm. And right. as a woman in coffee that will be the beneficiary of the ripple effects mm. of what you've spoken today, because mm. I really genuinely believe that men listening to this will turn around and question the way that they participate. I really want to thank you because mm, this welcome. is the kind of leadership that our industry desperately needs. And I don't say that lightly. As a woman mm. who's been in coffee for 20 years, n- mostly being the minority in any workplace that I was at and having it being hyper-masculine, um, I'm excited for the next generation of women who become the mm. beneficiary of the truth that you put out there in the way that you challenge men to be themselves and the best version of themselves. And I'm eternally grateful for it. Mm, thank you, Lee. Yeah. Our industry is lucky to have you, sir. Mm, thank you. 
It's really sweet. Everybody go visit a Proud Mary's Cafe, but please just think about some of the stuff that Nolan said here today. Mm. I love you, Nolan, and I'm mm, very, very you. grateful for this conversation. Mm. Thanks for letting us do it, Leigh. It's really cool. You've been very brave. And uh, Mm. this has been awesome. All the links for everything you're going to need to connect with Nolan will be in the show notes. Nolan, would you uh, sign us out for for this Um, episode? Peace, peace, love and peanut butter. Is that right? Peace, love and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.